Hi guys, what is up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am in a very empty room right now because this is turning into the nursery, which is so exciting. We just painted this wall a beautiful dusky lilac color. Um, and today I wanted to talk about my first trimester recap, symptoms, um, apps that I love to use, some great nausea and morning sickness, things that I found that actually helped and worked, and just some other little goodies. So if you are in the first trimester or just love to watch these videos like I do, then follow along. All right, um, also if you see a little nugget behind me, it's just biscuit sleeping in the corner, so shh. Um, so I never made a like two week wait symptom video or anything like that because I knew when I was going to make my like first trimester recap, I was just going to put all of my symptoms in there and kind of make it one big first trimester week zero to 12 or 13 mashup. So the first sign or like symptom that I had that I thought I was pregnant was I had this super vivid dream um, where I went to an ultrasound and the tech lady was like, oh look, there's the baby. It's like three weeks and two days pregnant, blah, blah, blah. And the dream was like so vivid. And so right when I woke up, I was like, oh, if I'm pregnant, I want to like, am I three weeks and two days? Is that my body like telling me? And sure enough, I looked up because I tracked my ovulation and all that kind of stuff. And sure enough, if I had ovulated and gotten pregnant, I would be three weeks and two days pregnant. So maybe it was just a weird coincidence, but I really felt like that was my body trying to tell me, hey, you're pregnant. Um, the other thing I noticed early on was that I had no desire to drink. And I'm not like crazy, but I do enjoy a glass of wine or Mark and I actually went to Miami shortly after I had gotten pregnant before I knew. And that whole weekend in Miami, he was like trying to pop bottles of rosé, get cocktails at dinner, like normal things we would do on a vacation. And my body was just like, mm -mm, don't want that right now. No, thanks. So it really is incredible that our bodies are trying to tell us, hey, you're pregnant don't drink that alcohol. So I thought that was really interesting. I also remember getting super like woozy around the time I would have implanted. So of course, all these signs I am referring back to after I found out I was pregnant, because obviously you can't find out before you implant if you're pregnant or not. But I remember there was a few days or like a day and a half that I was telling my husband, I was like, I feel so lightheaded and woozy, like I don't know why. And I remember Googling afterwards, like, you know, why does it happen? Stuff like that. And a bunch of articles had just said, you know, sometimes around implantation, when the thing is implanting into your uterus, you can get lightheaded and woozy and feel off and stuff like that. So I definitely had that feeling. And then I definitely had a little bit of implantation bleeding, which I normally spot before my period. So this wasn't out of the ordinary, but looking back now, I do know it was implantation bleeding. I also had a little bit of cramping, headaches, normal things like that. But again, all things I normally get before a period. So none of these were super out of the ordinary or crazy pregnancy symptoms. And I would say that pretty much sums up that two week wait period of time. Um, after that, I felt really good for a couple more weeks. I would say around week six or seven is when the morning sickness started. And it was more of like a, intermittent all day nausea queasy feeling um i only vomited i would say a handful of times maybe like 10 times the whole time i had morning sickness um but it was that constant like i feel like i'm going to throw up or dry heaving or just feeling really queasy and nauseous and not wanting to do anything i remember thinking in my head like i can't even remember a time when I had motivation to work out, like I just like did not work out from like week six to week 15. <laughs> like that entire chunk of time, I was like, no thanks, I don't feel great, I'm not gonna push my body. And really I felt blessed that I wasn't like the super crazy throwing up all the time, but also, you know, it really takes it out of you to be going all the time working out a lot you know kind of being on the go taking care of things stuff like that and to go from that to realizing you need to just lay down rest and get through this period of time and i remember there are some days and this is awful to say but i am being fully candid here some days i just was like 
I like pregnancy is not what people make it seem like, you know, sometimes they talk about the glow and feeling like the best they've ever felt and, you know, feeling your baby and stuff. That first trimester, you were thinking nothing about that. Like not even a single thought of wanting to find out the gender. Like people thought I was crazy. They're like, you don't at least want to try and go early and see if it's a boy or girl. I was like, nope, no thanks not feeling up to even moving off the couch, let alone wanting to know what the heck the baby is. So that sounds awful, but I feel like a lot of women go through that. And just in a sense of either they hated pregnancy or that first trimester really took them out and you don't feel quite pregnant yet and you're sick and you're just trying to survive basically. And then once you get a little bit into that second trimester, for me, it was like week 15, 16, 17, when I started to feel better and like I was more excited about the pregnancy. So um, don't feel bad if you are feeling that way because that is how I have felt and I just knew I was like, I want to be pregnant, but at the moment when I was just trying to survive, I was like, I'm just got an end goal of like 13 weeks. At the time I thought 13 weeks is when the morning sickness stops. It doesn't. But at the time I was like, I just had this goal of 13 weeks and I just need to get there. So if you feel like that, you are not alone and you are doing a great job. Okay. So kind of going off those symptoms, I'm just going to go into like diet, cravings, things like that from the first trimester. And to be honest, I had no cravings. If anything, I had 100% aversions. Um, no food sounded good. I was on that ramen, saltine, like once in a while, I thought about having a vegetable, but it was not often. And um, just like that carb lifestyle and living it up and <laughs> really just trying to eat what I can eat. So my diet didn't really consist of anything healthy, I would say. Um, I did a lot of research because I was nervous. I had read the book Real Food for Pregnancy early on. I was excited to eat really healthy and like really like nourish my baby, you know, like give it the correct nutrients it needs and stuff like that. And boy, in that first trimester, if you get hit, if you get hit with that morning sickness or nausea or anything like that, um, it is really tough to even think about eating <laughs> nutrient dense food. You are just trying to eat something to fill your body with something so you don't vomit and you can get to your next meal basically. So my diet did not consist of anything really healthy. Um, once in a while I try to drink a smoothie to get some nutrients in, like I would put frozen spinach in there and some fruit and things like that to at least give my body something. But yeah, it was ramen, pretzels, saltines. Um, those were like my staples. <laughs> um, so next on to like my uh, nausea, morning sickness remedies and stuff like that. I really didn't do a ton of um, things that a lot of other videos recommended. I had tried the essential oils, like the peppermint and stuff. I didn't quite think that worked very well. Um, honestly, the thought of drinking ginger tea made me want to vomit. So if that's not you, go for it. Um, I bought the preggy pops. I thought they were just a delicious hard candy. I didn't think they like subsided morning sickness or nausea or gave me like a burst of energy or anything, um, but they were a fun treat. So you could try those out. The one thing, the one thing I actually thought worked was taking B6 and Unisum. And I am not one to take any sort of like supplements or aids or anything like that. You know, when you're feeling like crap every day, you're kind of like, I would just love to wake up and not feel like laying back down because you're so nauseous. So the B6 and the Unisum was a game changer. So basically you can get these over the counter. Unisum is a sleep tablet, but you, I took a half of a half of a pill. So I think they're like, 25 milligrams maybe or something like that. So I took half of a half of that. And I found that was like the sweet spot just to at least help me get to bed and stuff like that. And then in the morning you take one tablet of B6 and I just did a 25 milligram tablet of B6, but I think they go up to 50 milligrams depending on your nausea. And of course, always consult with your doctor before taking these, do your own research, stuff like that. Um, but I had found for me just taking the small sleep tablet to make sure I slept because that's I think the biggest thing is making sure you get a super good well rested night of sleep really helps with your nausea and stuff. I noticed when I slept like crap the next day I felt like crap. 
all day. Um, so getting a really good night of sleep and the unisom helps. And then it's whatever in the unisom, the doxa whatever, mixed with the B6 is what's supposed to combat the morning sickness when you wake up. So you take the unisom and then right when you wake up in the morning, you take a tablet of B6. And I did find that those two things together really helped me have a better morning. I wouldn't say it went away all day, but I definitely felt overall better when I did those things than when I didn't. And I did a few trials because like I said, I don't like taking things like that if I don't have to. Um, and so every once in a while I would be like, okay, I think I'm feeling a little bit better and I would stop taking them. And then of course I would vomit the next morning or just feel really awful for a few days. And so I just realized I just needed to slowly keep taking them or keep taking them and like cutting down the dosage. So even though I was taking a half of a half of a unisum, I would start breaking that half into another half and just taking a little bit of B6 in the morning and trying just testing the sweet spot till I was totally over it and was able to sleep and wake up and not feel nauseous. So if you're looking for something, ask your doctor, but the B6 and unisum that everybody recommended in their first trimester videos, I found actually helpful. So onto essentials, I didn't really use anything in the first trimester. Obviously you don't need a pregnancy pillow yet and you're not quite showing or need new clothes like maternity clothes. Um, so you really don't need a whole lot, but the one thing I did use and loved was my Pregnancy Plus app, which I'll show over here. Um, I just thought it was so in depth and detailed and I thought the graphics were super cool. It was awesome to keep up with every day. They give you like new articles depending on where you're at and just updating you on your pregnancy and what the baby's doing like every single day and also like a weekly update of like as you're entering this new week, this is what's happening with the baby. So I found this app to be the most interactive, user-friendly, um, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And yeah, I just thought they did a great job. And it was really fun at keeping up every day with like what the baby's up to. The only other essential I would mention would be maybe getting some good books to read. Um, a few that I loved was the Real Food for Pregnancy, even though you don't eat very well <laughs> in the first trimester for most of us, if you can, eat and tolerate other food this book is phenomenal um in those first few weeks before i had morning sickness i tried a bunch of her recipes and they are were actually all really good her like beanless beef chili with liver it sounds gross but like apparently liver is super good for the baby um was super good and then her like crustless spinach quiche that she has in there was delicious um and a few others i tried were just so simple to make, easy ingredients, and there's like scientific research behind everything in the book and why it's really good for baby and development and stuff like that. And so I'd recommend reading the book not only for that, but also she gives a great like do and don't list in there um, because a lot of do and don't lists you'll read online are kind of outdated, I would say. Like for example, the whole like don't eat raw fish, sushi, that kind of debate. Um, you know, I am okay with whatever anybody does. That's your opinion and route and that's great for you. Um, I'm just sharing what I'm doing. And so what I found, and my doctor even said this too when I had my first meeting with him was like, you want raw fish, go for it. Eat at a high quality place, make sure it's high grade, fresh, kept cold, all those good stuff and you're totally good to go. And even in this book, Real Food for Pregnancy, she talks about how like in Japan and Asian countries like that, how raw fish is on the recommended list for pregnancy women and how good it is for you and the nutrients you can get from it and stuff like that. So she just talks about how sometimes we are following this strict list of do and don'ts and we're actually hindering ourselves from getting certain nutrients that can help the baby versus other ones that we actually should be avoiding. So she helps you kind of navigate those in a modern world society and what you can kind of do nowadays versus the outdated list you'll find online of the old do's and don'ts. The other book I really loved was Mindful Pregnancy, I think. And there's a few ones I'm reading right now, but at least for the first trimester, 
I thought that one was really good. It talks a lot about like meditation and hypnobirthing and just different options to think about and research. Um, some gentle yoga stretches that could help with nausea, some really natural ways to cure nausea and morning sickness and other pains you might be having during the first trimester. And the thing I liked about the book is it goes trimester by trimester. So you really just read the first third of the book about the first trimester, implement those, and then you can wait until your second trimester to read the next part when it's actually relevant to where you're at. So I found that one really good. It was like endorsed by Deepak Chopra, which he's like a high, high up there like Gandhi in my head. He's like the best at being mindful and bliss and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's what I want. That's what I need in my life. So I really enjoyed that book. Um, otherwise, I would say the other books that I'm reading right now, I'll mention in my second trimester recap because you really don't need to start reading them too early on, especially in the first trimester when you're just surviving, just survive. All right, my friends. So that is it for my first trimester recap. Um, Basically, I just, you know, did B6, Unisum, didn't work out, ate carbs, and had morning sickness until second trimester. So if I can do it, you can do it too. And yeah, I've seen a lot of people give a little bum shot at the end, so why the freak not? Um, today, I am almost 18 weeks, so this is an 18-week bum shot, not quite a 12 or 13-week one, but you get the gist. So here I am, and here is the shot. So I have a pretty bad posterior tilt that I'm trying to work on, squeezing under. But anyways, this is the bump. She's looking great. And yeah, just feeling, feeling pudgy, you know? Like, I don't know if this is appropriate on YouTube, but the way I explain it to people is, like a fupa, you know, like, like you got this thing there and you don't quite look pregnant. So you shouldn't be wearing tight clothes because it's, it's not yet flattering. Like, oh, cute bump. Right now it's like, is that a fupa? I don't know. <laughs> so anywho, that is my body type at 18 weeks pregnant, which is exciting. Um, and I'm excited to get a little bit more bumpage going on. And yeah, thanks so much for watching my video. If you guys really like this, give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel and helps me out. And I'm diving into pregnancy and motherhood. So if that interests you, then follow along. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye.